engagement with humanitarian engineering disproportionately interests women. So that's what I personally see. You know, besides representation, inclusivity and many other things that are important, I honestly believe that humanitarian engineering is an avenue for increasing female engagement and representation in STEM. The biggest thing that I'm getting out of this scholarship, which I'm incredibly grateful to have, is actually funding next year's local design summit. So half of the funds from this $5,000 grant are going towards making next year's design summit possible. Engineers Without Borders has humanitarian design summits. They used to happen in places like Nepal, Cambodia, but obviously with the coronavirus, they haven't been occurring anymore. And that used to be a pretty important way for students to find out about humanitarian engineering and engage with it because it was this you know, great allure of two, three weeks overseas and then all of the workshops kind of engaging you with humanitarian centred engineering and cultural competency and all of those things that are very important in a discipline like this. Since they haven't been able to happen, some colleagues and myself, Angus, Louise and Patricia, we thought, well, why not try to do one in Canberra? You know, we have our First Nations people here. We know that engineering has let down First Nations people time and time again. And so over the course of about a week in February, we ran a local design summit. So it was based on what is development? And the theme was native grains and land regeneration. So it was all about learning from First Nations engineering and technologies. And it was a great success. I, I mean, I have to think that, <laughs> but I think everyone else, all of our participants really enjoyed it as well. We were so lucky to have the support of so many wonderful people like Dan and Warren and Murray on Naguru Farm. And they were kind enough to share their knowledge, their history, their work with us. And so our design project was ultimately looking at this challenge in native grains where we have a growing industry, but not really the growing technologies and adaptations to meet that. The demand is increasing, but what happens when it so radically outgrows our ability to meet those demands and making sure that those profits and that autonomy stay in the hands of First Nations people, right? The goal isn't for it to suddenly become something that we take over. We scratched the surface, right? I feel like I know so much more than I did, but I still know so little because there's so much to learn in this area. And the design that we made at the end, which was basically a design of how to sort and clean grains, these specific grains that we'd been introduced to by Dan and Warren, there's so much more to be done there, undoubtedly. So absolutely, we're hoping to run it again. And you know, there are important things that we've done this year that we'd like to keep, like ensuring that we have First Nations representation and ensuring we're able to pay them appropriately for their time ensuring that we have a welcome to country and we can pay him or her. This year it was Wally, he was amazing, that we can pay him appropriately for their time and ensuring that any First Nations people who want to participate in the summit aren't paying for a ticket and ensuring that the other tickets that are sold are subsidised to the lowest possible amount that we can because we don't want it to be an accessibility issue. And that's one of the reasons that having this scholarship, that having essentially what I'm treating as a grant for this local design summit is so exciting.